Hello and welcome back to the European Championships 2014. Uh, now, this is the top eight. Well, this is it. This is the most important match for all of the players that attended. All 1,000 and I believe it's 1,060 after late registrations. Yeah, 1,058. Yeah. Uh, basically, yeah. I mean, even winning this tournament? Irrelevant, apart from the prizes. Well, it's what people really want to go for is Rimini. It's a great, it's a great honour uh, to win the European Championships, but this is the match that twenty thousand of you uh, attended tournaments all across uh, the various regions to uh, get into uh, to play this match and win this match. So much is riding on this: uh, the ability to represent Europe and your countrymen in the World Championships. Definitely. Now, against uh, well, our opponents today is Andrea Zanari versus Abdurazak Gasmi. Um, uh, we do have... Is that okay? Yeah, well, they're not our opponents. They're uh, our players. <laughs> you know what I mean. I, I, I got it. I got it. Uh, anyway, uh, we have here, we have Bujin, and here we have Hat. So it's going to be two decks that are featured quite a lot. Yes. Um... So yeah, we're, we're interested to see exactly how this matchup goes. Uh, yeah, we're going to be saying it's the uh, stakes have never been higher uh, for these players. I don't believe either of these players have made it to the World Championships before. Not that uh, I know of. Not from the information that we have. Um, oh, and it looks like they're doing some really nice shuffling. <laughs> is that... Is that it, oh no, he's got eight piles. Uh, he's let me down. Already. I'm not going to engage this anymore. <laughs> I've made my stance very clear on how I feel about <laughs> about shuffling. About shuffling here. It's so interesting. Uh, okay, it's that's psychological just aspect of it. Um, be interesting to see how this goes. The hat deck has a lot of disruption, and I don't know how Andre's Bujin deck is set up. We've seen the one Bujin monster stands versus many, and we've also seen a flood of Exceed monsters in our previous Bujin features. But to get to the top eight must be a really cool hat. Uh, the, both of these players are going to be at the top of their game. We're going to see fireworks. Well, we sh should see fireworks and hopefully not a handful of spellbooks that can't be activated in this important matchup. Well, there's no spellbooks. So. Uh, there's no literal fireworks either. I uh, will just point that out. You can imagine them. You know, someone can take a screenshot and Photoshop the fireworks just in. Just like uh, paint your, your fingers gold and silver and just like... Shh. I feel like that would be too much effort. Yeah. It's really hot up here, and uh, the stakes are so high, I'm uh, really excited to see how this is uh, going to play out. Hopefully the nerves don't get the best of these guys. 20,000 people, and we're down to the final eight for this season. Well, 20,000 entries. Uh, yeah, 20, well, technically, yeah, it's 20,000, because 20,000 entries... Yeah, I yeah. don't know how many of those are. I, I don't know if that number's including... Uh, is it solely uniques, or if it's including people that entered multiple regionals? But uh, either way, it was 20,000 people attended 20,000 chances. Yes. 4,500 people, and now we're down to this, to eight people. To technically beat all of those people. Okay. Here we go. To here. Abzurak drawing a pot of duality to start off with. And... Okay, so we see on an from Andre a Bujin oh. Mikazuki, a, a nice Bujin Crane, a Bujin Yamato, a Fiendish Chain, best weapon in the game, and Fire Formation. Thank you. That is that is the hand. That is the hand that you want. Um, uh, Abdur Razak is getting a Pot of Duality, Dimensional Prison, Nobleman Crossout, Bottomless Trap Hole, and Artifact Bail Tack. Not the best of hands to open with for the, the duality. He's got a. For against Bujin, that Noble and Crossout is probably not so great, but that Pot of Duality gives him a lot of flexibility for his opening play. He's just reading that there. Uh, can anybody see what that is? It's a Void Trap Hole. Yeah. So there you go. But I imagine Andre's seen this card a few times, or he's interested in, actually interested in a question here, or he's trying to lead his opponent um, into making a decision by using some mind tricks by actually touching the card and putting the image in his head but that card is important uh, very subtle body language uh, it's very difficult to tell if you've got time to read a psychology book uh, that might you might be able to make a more sense out of that than me but sometimes you can sometimes your opponent will make a decision if you touch uh, if you touch the cards although you shouldn't be touching your opponent's cards without their permission he went for forbidden lance 
Andre might be on the next level mind games, but we'll find out. See Andre's hand, uh, opening hand there, the Bujin Yamato and the Fire Formation Tenki. Very strong start for Bujin. Anybody has the Bujin Crane. We already see uh, the Gnome on a cross out and the Artifact Bial attack are both kind of unusable at this time against Andre. There's not saying that there won't be a set monster later in the game. But he's got another pot of duality, so he's got another chance to see some stuff. Okay, we're going to see a bottomless trap pole taking out the Bujin Yamato. Yamato just getting a remove there. A uh, bit of a shame. It's okay. See, I enjoy Bujin. I don't think anybody has... Uh, did not a lot of people have uh, really caught up with the fact that each of the characters are a character from Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, I believe. I can see a similarity. I can't say for certain if that's, if that's that the case. I believe that is actually the case, because they all look like one of the characters. Oh. Uh, and I'll they all have the same colour of their character as well. I'll let you guys uh, be the judge of that. Yamato is meant to be Jaden, by the look of it there. Uh, the hair is the same shape. It's an interesting theory you have. It is. It is. Again, I can't. I can't confirm anything. Mostly because I don't know the uh, what the artist's direction was for that card. Okay, so we're going to see a uh, trap tricks Remelia, uh, and it's going to get that void trap hole to Abzorak's hand. Discussion going on there. Okay, we're going to see an attack from uh, Trap Tricks Mermelia. Uh, connecting for 1600 damage. Uh, in case you're wondering what the face down card on uh, Andre's filled, I've got a Phoenix Chain, which he's elected to not use. In his hand he has a Fire Formation Tenki, a Bujinji Crane, and a Bujin Mikazuki. And a Kaiser Coliseum. Very, uh, very powerful card. Well, very, very disruptive card. Okay, so we're going to see Void Trap Hole, uh, Forbidden Lance, and Dimensional Prison that is currently face down or for Abzarak. Andre playing the Fire Formation Tenki to get the Bujin Yamato. Uh, he definitely wants to get that Bujin Yamato online as soon as he can. It's a very good engine for Bujin. Yeah, uh, even if he's not uh, attacking with it each turn, it's um, creating all these interesting interactions, all these powerful interactions he can have later. Okay, so where, what are we... What are you thinking, Andre? He has a soul charge in his hand. Uh, the Kaiser Coliseum uh, only really placing limitations on Abzarak. Because uh, Andre can just play more monsters. It does open the gates for Abzarak to follow up a little bit, but as long as that Kaiser Coliseum is in play, Abzorak uh, has to follow the pace of Andre, which is exactly where he wants to be with a Bujin deck. And now his Bujin Yamato is starting to put some work in. Uh, I would bring up Kaiser Coliseum for you guys, but I unfortunately don't have that. You may be wondering about the trap hole. There's a void trap hole right there. Very powerful card. Yeah, providing there's a special summon, but we've got a normal summoned uh, Bujin monster. I also believe that's the card that he added from Pot of Duality earlier, so Andre is very aware that Abzorak has this card, or at least he should be. 
he's attacking. So that's actually sending a clear signal that there's a... Oh, wait, it was a Forbidden Lance that was taken earlier, I believe? Yes, there, sorry, sorry. there is a Forbidden Lance that's okay. there. Okay, so Andrew knows that there's a Forbidden Lance follow-up. Uh, how... Yep. No, so Crane he's just doing damage to that. And, okay, yep. Yeah, Crane would... Crane is damage there. calculation, the Crane is used. Uh, allowing him to... Uh, take out two of Andre's cards for only one of his own. I have Jack feeling pretty confident to uh, attack into the uh, Bujin Yamato. Although he didn't see the crane added, uh, he saw the Bujinji hair added to his hand and sent to the graveyard, so maybe he was just taking a chance. And they're trying to figure out how much attack the uh, Yamato should have had. Uh, Bujinji crane makes its uh, Bujin Yamato's attack become twice its original attack. Uh, so that should be a Freddy 600 dealing 2,000 points of damage to Absarak. Careful timing of the, well, the damage step can be a very confusing thing, but play, play correctly worked out in Andre's favour there on the exchange. I mean, um, one of my favourite things about Bu Bujinji Crane there is the fact that it also doubles the original attack as well. Uh, so the 800 minus does not apply. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so Andre, he survived that one. Where do you go from here? Bujin Mikazuki. Rather large card. Now, here's the thing. Is he going to try and XC someone, or is he just going to attack? Those cards work very well uh, together. There's such synergy between the uh, Mikazuki and the Bujin Yamato. Because the Yamato add, uh, can add any card from your deck, any Bujin card from your deck to your hand. And then you can send a Bujin card to the graveyard, which in turn triggers your Bujin Mikazuki. Uh, which then can get you Bujin Kanonish. And, um, and it's a lot of damage just with those two monsters uh, in play. Because uh, you've got the far formation tanky, that's a 2,000 attack Mikazuki and a 1,900 attack Yamato. And Andre's keeping his options open here. Uh, every turn that goes by, he's gaining more and more of these options available to him. And he's pressuring uh, Abdurak to answer this Bujin field. Whilst sitting pretty secure with a Fiendish Chain and a card, which I can unfortunately can't tell you what that is. Abdurak still holding that number one across site from turn one. Obviously prepared for a lot of gear gear. Rather take the... Uh, I would be able to tell you that that, that is their face up. Uh, it looks like Call of the Haunted. It's Call of the Haunted to bring back Trap Tricks from Amelia. Uh, sorry, we've got a bit of uh, glare on the cards there. Yeah, we've got a... There it's the sun's... It would be the exact time the, s the sun is high in the sky as we have this big showdown. It is about to be out behind a building, so... Uh, we will be fine soon. Yep. Okay, finish chain being chained to that trap tricks from Emilio. Oh, Majesty's Fiend. Oh, this is uh this is unexpected. The main deck Majesty Fiend from Abzorak. Uh this is gonna prevent uh Andre using any monster effects. I'm really surprised by this. Uh, I wasn't expecting to see this uh I knew I was expecting this card to be big this weekend, but yeah. I wasn't expecting to see it right now. Um, it's a powerful card. I mean, it doesn't even say monster effects on the field. No, it's just monster effects. Period. So no Bujinji Crane, no Bujinji Hair, no Bujinji Turtle. Just any card that is of that color cannot be used. Now, what is the chain currently on then? Uh, the finished chain was on the um, Trap Tricks uh, Mermelia, but the Trap Tricks Mermelia was tributed for uh, Majesty's Fiend. And staying on the field because he had not been destroyed. Okay. Andre in a, a lot of trouble here because... Oh, or not. He's just drawn it out there. It's uh, costly out, but he may be forced to take it. Well, he cannot activate the uh, Mixuki effect anyway. So He does also have the Booch Incarnation. It's a soul charge I'm uh, currently looking at. Here's the cards that he currently has on the field, in case you're interested. Uh, yeah, Mikazuki, Tanki, Fiendish Chain, and one unknown card. Uh, 
Yep, we're seeing Doc Hall being played. He has to answer that Majesty's Fiend. Uh, there is... I think that's going to resolve. Yep. Majesty's Fiend being dealt with. That was a dangerous position to be in for Andre. And he has another Yamato. Is that his second or his third this game? I believe it's the second. This first one got bottomless trap holds. Oh, then the second is in the graveyard. And the f that's the third. The far formation tank he got one, and now he has the third. A free Hamato. That's uh, that's all right for Andre. He hasn't used even such for. Uh, well, he has. He hasn't used a Bujin Yamato effect again anymore. Bujin Yamatos. That Kaiser Coliseum is making that trap chicks die near not very good because he would uh, hope would hope to take out uh, get the trap chicks Mermelio for an exe summon. Yep, he goes for the dimensional prison on the attack from Bujin Yamato. Takes it with the turtle. I think he's asking what the attack is. It's 1900. Because there's one far formation techie. Uh, okay. Check for the uh, life points to update there. Yep. I don't think it looks very good for Abzarak uh, there. The Andre is just further progressing his. Uh, Answers to Abzarak's uh, removal cards. Uh, I believe that was an Artifact Sanctum that was just drawn. Yes. We've seen this card do a lot this weekend. Okay, so... Fortunately, it may uh, may not be a fantastic card. I mean, if in this situation, there is a lot of turtle and hare. Okay. okay. The options are being considered by Andre. Again, the Void Trap Hole being not very useful against normal summoned monsters. Now, at the moment, we're looking about 3,800 attack on the field. It's very close. Could even, uh, from... Uh, no, he's not going to get the Cowboy for game because the artifact's out him. So, he's pressing his opponent. Artifact's out being used. This, this has the power to... Uh, stifle Andre's entire battle phase here. Artifact morale tack. It's a very interesting option in Abzarak's deck to, and it's brought him very far into this tournament. He's made some good calls. Majesty's Fiend. <laughs> Majesty's Fiend. Was another giant card for this weekend, actually. Yes. That's unfortunate that uh, I'm doing this, otherwise I would definitely be entering that tournament. <laughs> it's a very, very nice card. Yeah, I'm surprised we've not... Uh, I was expecting to see a lot of it, uh, but at the same time I wasn't expecting to see the uh, abstract to... Tribute summon it in the main deck. Yeah. Oh, there's okay. just a quick judge question there. Uh, okay. I'll just let them resolve that issue there. Um, so yeah, so far it's it's been a really good, good game. Um, the Kaiser Coliseum again putting in so much work for Andre being able to stop the Trap Tricks Dynera or very many of the other combo plays that the 
uh, that Abzorak is uh, hoping to make to perform these Exe summons. Now, Dionia is going to be able to come out next turn if uh, if he doesn't get rid of the fact that he has two monsters on that side of the field. But he still knows that there's a Void Trap hole there. Uh, there's also, uh, yeah, he knows the Void Trap hole there. The key is that he doesn't forget that he knows it's there. But there's also an Artifact Morale attack on the field that he has to deal with. He should be able to. Um, Taking a look at the options he has to him. And we're back. Okay, we're back. I'm not sure. Let's see what he does. What the issue is, but the field hasn't changed too dramatically. Oh, it's the Kaiser Coliseum keeps coming up as blank hard, I'm afraid. Again, just explaining uh, the ruins. Now, I believe that Moral Tech is being stopped by... It's uh, a not a targeting effect, so not, no. he Ooh. won't be using the Bujin G Turtle. After Razak looking a bit ah. worried there. Okay, it's probably to do with the Bujinji hair, uh, because it's not a targeting ah. effect. Um, but Bujinji hair does just say that once this game, it cannot be destroyed. Uh, Once this turn, it cannot be destroyed. I can't pull the card up, but yeah, uh, I you could pull it up. The text up here. You target moment. the monster that you want to affect. Okay. Well, I think I jump in the gun because he didn't even. He didn't. He elected to not use the Bujinji hair. I'm pretty sure you have to target. Looking. Uh, yes, you do have to target. Yeah, he targets and Moral Tech doesn't target. So whatever he banishes the Bujinji hair for. Uh, Abzorak just, just takes uh, out the other one. Yeah, pick the other one. Well, then that does force a choice. He delects, uh, he just lets that go and says, um, although he could now just use it in this situation. Just having a check there. He does not want to not stop this, otherwise crazy plays will happen next turn. Looking out there, he does have a soul charge. Oh, yeah, but this is the effect through. Now that he contr Andre controls no monsters, he's uh, his Kaiser Colosseum uh, won't be active, Which? allowing Andre Abderak, sorry, to uh, play out more of his monsters. And he sees the window and he goes for it. There's the dying it. Let's get ready. And ooh, the MST effect there, probably taking out. Touch takes yeah. and he's, he says enough of this Kaiser Coliseum. Definitely. See, and that's why I love Dynia. Because, especially when you've got a Memelia. Oh, it's, it's horrible. Oh. It's such a simple thing, because you, you take out a card your opponent has, and then you get a rank 4 out of it. Uh, just on the boat on the way here, um, playing against a few of the judges that I was travelling with, uh, Paul being one of them. Uh, every game, just uh, two dying in opening hand. <laughs> just sitting and waiting for the nice exition night to come out. <laughs> nice, simple exition night. Take back the uh, advantage over my opponent. Okay, some extra tech options being considered. We'll see which one uh, Abstract decides is the best play here. There's a Booch Incarnation and a Soul Charge, so Andre has uh, some plays available to him. But there is a Void Trap Hole. Is that going to be a number 101? He's uh, considering it. Okay, the yeah, number 101. Play. I always think that Maystroke is a better choice in this position. He's probably not playing Maystroke. Extra decks are very tight now. and Yes, they are. Uh, I think Maystroke kind of fell behind some of the other rank 4 options, like Ragnar Zero, number 101, um, Excision Knight. Definitely. And there's a Torrential Tribute added to this uh, defensive position. Ah, that's probably oh, what the uh, Silent Honor arc is going to be for then, waiting for... Oh, that's going to be quite devastating when you think about it. You can keep the monster around. It's okay. more, he's uh, looking at his extra days really considering that soul charge but it's it may be to his deficit because of that torrential tribute yeah a soul charge into the torrential tribute would be pretty bad but 
he's probably thinking maybe Pooch Incarnation. He's got two options. He's got a Forbidden Lance as well, so he can outplay... He's got his own Forbidden Lance, so he can outplay the trap cards over on Abzorax Field. I still think that Abdurazak has got, has got a... He's feeling pretty... Clear upper hand at the moment. Yeah, he's feeling pretty confident about his field. He's got some defensive cards down, and he's got stuff that his opponent, uh, that Andre, has to deal with. And Andre is now thinking of how, of tur how to turn the tables. And he's also have to be very mindful of those uh, face-down cards. Pooch Incarnation, going to come up for Andre. Abzorak right, taking a moment to, to read the card. Again, uh, players that choose to pick up and read these cards, uh, they know the effects, but when you're at this level of tournament, especially in a game so important, it's just worth taking that extra second to see, have I forgotten anything? Pick it up, just take a moment to read it, even though you've seen it plenty of times before. Why, why, why take the risk and... Uh, miss one line of text which actually makes all the difference and cost yourself the top well the top four here the top four now and as this uh, game is still going there's some uh, results from uh, some of the other games that's happening in the top eight uh, paris is one and height is one uh, bury is one and boma is also one and Mazzolini is one and barbary is zero at the moment uh, so uh, pretty much the only the only game so far that has still got a game running okay so match. Yeah, the Puja Incarnation is activated. Abzorak's asking some questions about the situation. Andre looks a little bit nervous, if, uh, if you ask me. He, he knows he needs uh, this play to go through, and he's facing down a lot of uh, potential trap cards from Abzorak, and he knows the type of deck he's playing is designed to make his his uh, his make it difficult for Andre to get going. Torrental tribute. Yep, that's going to clear the field up. And Off just take silent on our arc there again. Yep, still leaving him with a 2100 attack uh, threat that will need to be destroyed twice. No, no forbidden lance used or Jinji hair. Interesting. Well, I feel that he's going to be using Booch Incarnation at the moment. Oh, he just used that. No, oh, did he? Got Trentled. He's still holding on to the soul, the soul charge. Is still there. Yeah, ah, it's a soul charge. That he still has in his hand. Okay, just a uh, quick technical issue that's being sorted out there. Uh, now I think that it's the it's time for a soul charge. And yep, he's laid it down. There's still a void trap hole. I don't know. Yeah, there's still a void trap hole over on the Abirak side of the field. Andre, how much are you willing to pay? Uh, two monster soul charge, I believe. Bujinji turtle and Bujinji crane. A four thousand life points. Oh, there. it's a four thousand. Uh, Andre is pretty, pretty desperate, and he's um, he's committing to this. Uh, something it feels that something is going to fall into a uh, into a void trap hole, but I don't think it really matters at this point. Only one of those monsters has more than two thousand attack. So he could stop the Michizuki, but he'd probably rather hold off for 
none of those monsters that Andre has actually can beat the um, number 101 in battle. Especially if he was to bring out a Susano, because that can only attack once. Each monster once. Yep, there it is. Ujin Susano. Susano. And he can't attack his soul charge this turn. Yeah. But he's using the effect, and is anything being changed in response? It it's a like turtle it. to the graveyard. Yeah, I think he's uh, saving that there, just in case anything that isn't a Bujin monster hits the field. I think he's also aware that his opponent uh, has answers. Yeah. Yeah, he's got the Bujinji hair still in the graveyard because he didn't so use it earlier. Turtle and a hair in there. Yeah. A bit of a large field. Ginger hair going to the graveyard. Just a uh, quick answer for the people asking in the stream there. Uh, we do we will not be posting any of the deck lists on the coverage site, um, as PJ has said on there. Ah, Bujinchi Katsuki, Katsuchi, or Bujin of lots of fire. It's just as resilient as that number 101. Ah, and Void Trap Hole is going to be used here. Now, just to interrupt, sorry, we have the first World Championship competitor. Uh, Marcel Burry has won in the top eight. So uh, we would do have our first World Championship competitor. We still have our invite. He must be over the moon right over now. Over the moon right now. I think that's why all the clapping uh, excited sounds over there. Where was, is, uh, where is he from? from, out of interest? Do we know? Uh, no, I've not actually given that information. Uh, well, he's so from Europe. I'll I'm getting uh, this live from PJ ah, okay. uh, and of course if you are actually watching on the Twitch you will have seen that in the chat of course uh, yeah they're currently answering a, a rules question um, we don't know what it is uh, we do not get this uh, information oh the rules question is still going on there um, yeah no one across out still in Abzarak's hand um, this whole game this card has been sitting in his hand very very good against Gear Gear not so good against here um, where are we he's uh, the judge there is definitely uh, trying to lay down. He's explaining uh, what's what's happening here. Lay down the law. Because that's what judges do. Oh, very, very knowledgeable judge. And it's been fantastic. Yeah, to incredible judge. With. Incredible judge. Now, that was the buzzer for time downstairs. Again, we'll have a little bit of time. Uh, We're still here. in game one. We are still in game one. It's, uh, it's been a long game. It's been a very long game. But it's looking at the life point scores. It's probably not going to be going on for much longer. Uh, it really just depends how this judge ruling ends, I'd assume. Um, not quite sure what... Uh, this would be quite a, quite, a sh quite a strange ending. Well, it would be quite an anticlimactic ending if uh, we go to time and it, the game is over before even game one finished. Yeah. Uh, but part of uh, playing in a large tournament like this is preparing yourself... Um, you hear some clapping because uh, more, more matches are ending. Uh, let's just uh, the let's friends and family of the remaining duelists and supporting country members. But you come to these events, and um, some games are going to go long. But the what you can do is make sure that you can play all of your moves in a reasonable space of time to give yourself the maximum amount of time uh, for the match. If you're struggling to finish a, a match um, where your opponent's uh, not... Um, if you're struggling to finish a match where you're both, you and your uh, testing partner are both very familiar with the cards in under 30, well, under 40 minutes, then perhaps you need a little bit, perhaps a little bit more practice would help you and give you some more time. Okay, so the issue's been resolved. The Void Trap Hole seems to have gone to the graveyard. I didn't catch what's happened. There's no cards in Andre's hand. He's fully committed to that field.
just let the players take a minute. Okay, his extra deck again. longest game one we've actually had uh, and we have another days. win uh, it looks like uh, our next world Compet championship competitor is uh, Eugene Height Eugene Height uh, did he say where he's from uh, no no uh, yeah, you so can find this out in the written coverage a little bit later and we'll, yeah. we'll have photos and an award ceremony so all of the information in fact there is is a top eight player profile I do believe that will be on the written coverage, or that generally there is. Yeah. Again, just above Matt's head, the link there. Well, you can't see me right now, but yeah. But well, above. Well, you should remember where I'm above sitting. Above Matt's head. If you've been following for this the no twenty or so hours that we have been, we have been online. How long have we been? That's a good question. Oh, there appears to be uh, some. Okay. In the history. The Trap Tricks Mumelia is being used, and Forbidden Lances. A little bit difficult from this angle uh, to see what's going on, but uh, okay. Both players very kind of nervous. There's a kind of just a, a stalemate going on. Ragnar Zero being summoned. Uh, we've not seen 103 uh, Ragnar Zero this weekend uh, on the stream, but everybody's uh, a lot of people playing this in their extra decks. Very very good against um, <laughs> Andre. Looking at his local language copy in his. Uh, yeah, that's a. Uh, that is going to be a problem with that tanky on the field. Yeah, the tanky is uh, powering up all of his monsters, so the Ab Abstract number 103 Ragnar Zero can... It's a quick effect as well, can take out monsters uh, and draw Abstract more cards. And he's asking questions about, uh, I think, uh, Bu uh, Bujinti uh, Kachisuki. Kach yeah. He has to successfully destroy the card in order to draw a card. So that's probably what the question was about. Um, Bujinji Turtle being used to deny that uh, number 103. Now, what is uh, that face down card, if you don't mind me asking? No one across that. It's that no one across that from uh, <laughs> the start of the game. So there really is no sort of answers back there. Can he stop it being destroyed? Is the uh, is the question. Now I have asked the staff if they could notify us when time has been called here on the feature match. I've not I'd seen them as of yet. They might not be able to get away from the table. There's been a lot of questions being asked. Uh, very complicated game state. Neither player wants to wants to make a misstep here. Uh, Andre is so low on life points. Uh, Abzorak, there it goes again. Yep. Now he's taking the risk by the look of it. But is he just going to attack? Because that would almost win him the game, actually. Both on 2500. Uh, I don't know on how where we are with end of match procedure, if it's started or not. Extremely long game happening here. Although, Massalini and Barberi are still playing also. Uh, they still have 1-0. Okay, uh, somebody... And yeah, that's it. He's uh, Andre, Andre Zanari has won game one. And I do think that may be time. Which would mean we'll be going to sudden death in yes. the thing. Again, I've not been notified yet. Uh, they had a bit of extra time, but I don't know if it was... Uh, 
this much time was on the round was called quite a while now, ago. Now I can um, actually find that out if just one moment. Uh, do you think you could be able to go over and find out if time has been called on the feature match for me? Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, so they'll be back in a moment. Uh, we'll be able to find out. Yeah, that was a, a very long game. Uh, a lot of back and forth uh, to to get to that final result where Andre was able to take it down with uh, Bujins. Yes. Uh, three uh, turns. Three, three minutes. minutes. Three minutes are left. To they be have able to three play minutes before they go into time. So last game. So. Uh, well, it depends on when they finish side decking. And um, it looks like Nicolo Massolini has just taken the win there. Uh, again, he will be going to the World Championships. Yes, I'm guessing he's from Italy. Yes, he was in our last feature match. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. It's, uh, <laughs> it's been a long one. They're shuffling up and getting ready for game two. This is likely to be the final game of this match because of the time constraints. Again, we had three minutes to side. This is a. Uh, unfortunately, the results are only three minutes on the round. A lot of players don't like uh, that some of these matches um, end in time. I know it makes for. I can kill the drive out of a, a match, but uh, these time constraints have to exist so that we keep the tournament moving forward so that you guys don't have to wait um, forever in order to sit back down and play your next round. If uh, over a thousand people playing matches without time constraints, we would definitely be here past 3 a.m. Oh, we'd be on round four right now. Yeah. Well, I'd, I'd have a beard longer than the Sage Qua. Sage Qua. Uh, Sage Qua? Sage Qua, yeah. I'd have a beard longer than him by the time we got out of here. We let, the, we let you players play as long as you... Well, could. Right, just offering the uh, shovels there. Those cards will go back into. The, yeah, there they go. Staff members working very hard there. And the reason why they look so tired is because they are. It's an extremely tiring job to have to stand up there all day, and uh, we give them the yeah. our thanks, definitely. Oh, we give those guys our thanks. They've been great. They're the ones that are currently supplying us with the information, so, uh, so we can give to you uh, what cards are on the table, uh, what cards are in their hands. Um, yeah, but definitely we're very, very grateful for both of our tech support. Okay, so the open has been drawn. I see a uh, I'm just seeing my head again. Here we have uh, six minutes just because of an extension as well that had to be given during a ruling. Oh, sure. Okay, so we've actually got quite a bit of time on this round. Uh, we've got a pot of duality in the opening hand of Andrew. Ah, this button. Problem solved. And that will tell you what's uh, in the hand there. Pot of duality, dimensional prison, soul exchange, which. Okay. Um, Traptrix Mermelio, pot of duality, and Traptrix Mermelio. Soul Exchange, an interesting. Okay, well, we know he. Not interesting. We know that Abstract is playing the Majesty's Fiend. Ah, uh, yes, he is. But it's also going to be a way to just get out. Moral tag. Yeah, he's, he's. It's it lets him take away his opponent's face down Gear Gear armor without actually flipping it. It's also going to allow him to get his rank five. Although, yeah, his opponent is definitely... It's two soul, uh, soul exchanges. He's and not playing... the hand. Is he going to bother with it? Or is he going to go for the disruption that would be in that torrential tribute? Is this the final game of the top eight? This is the final, the final game of the top eight. Okay. We'll then move on to the top four. Uh, to find out exactly. And then we'll be figuring out who is our strongest player in Europe for this season. Uh, which um, itself is a massive accomplishment. Definitely. Uh, bottomless Trap Hole, Dimensional Prison and Torrential Tribute going face down for Abzorak for his turn one. That's a Pretty good field. It's a very heavily committed field. 
Now, uh, just to interrupt there, I believe the actual final for people who are actually in the venue watching uh, either on a mobile phone or a tablet. Uh, we are actually, I believe, streaming this in the downstairs room. Yeah, I don't know if they have sound down the there, finals. but it's... Uh, I was told that there would be commentary as well. Okay. Okay. Again, more than likely with a short delay on there. Is that a second pot of duality? Uh, we're yeah, it's a pot of duality. And we're seeing, oh, Majesty's Fiend, uh, two wiretaps. Majesty's Fiend uh, forcing Andre's dark hole last game. And he has the soul exchange to, uh, to use Andre's anyway. monster. Not be a special summon as well, so that uh, that would be perfect. Costing a battle phase though. Oh, he's uh, just noticing there that there is. Yeah, it might be an issue, but we'll, we'll see what's happening. Just grabbing the judge over there. Okay, well. Uh, just noting a possible mark sleep, I think. Oh, we'll let them do that. We'll uh, we'll talk about these opening hands while the yeah. judges resolve this issue. Yeah, let's say uh, we've got a Bujin Yamato and a Bujin Crane in Andre's hand, which is a very good place to very good place to be because he can then use it to start getting his engine rolling. Uh, face down on the field, he has a wiretap, dimensional prison, another wiretap, and a bottomless trap hole. Uh, two of those uh, from Abzarak. He has the Soul Exchange, Majesty's Fiend. Forbidden Lance and Trap Tricks and Romelio in his hand. Uh, and like there. We'll be replacing a sleeve there. If anything, looks like one's just got scuffed while it's shuffling. Uh, that can happen in the long, uh, longer rounds of the tournament. Let's uh, just come away from the uh, duel now, just while they get that sorted. Yeah, so we'll uh, let them resolve that issue. Uh, how do you feel this match is going? Uh, pretty well so far. It's uh, very slow, very slow. But there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of things going on later on. A lot of combos being set up. Yeah, I mean, both players seem to have a lot that they can do right here. That Soul Exchange, Majesty's Fiend, uh, very, very powerful. But um, we can see on Andre's side of the field, he's got a bottomless trap hole for the summon. Two wiretaps to make sure that his opponent's not going to negate that trap. Uh, negate his summon with a trap or destroy his monster and he's got dimensional prison should all else fail and the majesty fiend comes for a direct attack um Abzarak also has a lot of stuff he can do he's got his own bottomless trap hole torrental tribute dimensional prison uh, available to him so he's got a lot of a large defensive suite not uh, to uh, call out anything there but uh just we've had a, a a couple of complaints in the twitch stream there just to uh, apologize for matt's uh, pronunciation of Abdurazak. Abdurazak. Um, sorry. sorry. Sorry, guys. Um, and Abdurazak. 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 Um, when, you, when you watch this back, I, I apologize to you. Um, if, uh, if it helps, just uh, say his last name. Then uh, it's Gasmi. Gasmi. Okay. Gasmi. I'll, I'll go Gasmi. Sorted. Uh, yeah. This is the last game for the top eight to figure out who our final player is. Did we actually get the locations of where these players were from? Uh, no, we didn't. Uh, again, if you're looking at that, you can be looking at the uh, at the written coverage again, which you can find just above Matt's head, around there. Yes, there. Sure. But if you're on Twitch, again, don't click that button because you won't be able to watch us anymore. Well, you will, but you'll have to go back on the page. Yes. Yes. Oh, it's still anyone's game. Uh, as soon as they resolve this issue so, uh, just going to check in on that yeah ah uh, yeah it looks like everything's just being sorted now the sleeves are just being replaced but yeah see it, it could really be any anybody's game really Definitely yeah, there's yeah. still a lot of. Um, well, we've 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 covered this. Um, Basically, we'll see what's happening. Uh, Andre it's already that one nil up 
over uh, Gasme. Although this is again going to warrant another time extension. Yes. Uh, so uh, the likelihood of going to time again. It's getting further away, but uh, Andre's already sitting on that one win. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so uh, just sorting out that issue there. Um, it's really far too early in the game to tell anything now. Yeah, we got we, we, we stopped it uh, right at the very beginning before players could get set up um, properly. I think we just saw those opening turns coming down. Yep. Yeah. Not really much else to say about that. No, we've, we've seen a lot over this uh, weekend, a lot of, a lot of great stuff. Um, Spellbooks doing fantastically. Uh, I don't know how many of yeah. those are still in the just tournament. We don't actually have the. I don't actually have the numbers here, but you will find that on there. Now, um, if I remember correctly, our last feature match involved Spellbooks, did it not? Yes. And that was actually, if I remember, Maserati. Not Maserati. Masolini. Yes. Yes. So that would mean that Spellbook is definitely going into the into the World Championship. So almost two years. Two years on the run. Definitely. So it's very possible that we could see another Spellbook win. Uh, just. Possibly no Jalgen. Yeah, no well, Jalgen. I miss Jalgen. Do you really miss Jalgen? No, it's like one of those fond memories. <laughs> like you go, yeah, Jalgen, and then like Turbo you Chaos. see it and you just go, oh, Jalgen. No, it's like you you remember you have fond memories of playing Chaos Emperor Dragon and having that priority play, but then uh, I never had a fond. Then you memory. look at it again, and then it's it's gone. <laughs> I never had a single fond memory of Chaos Emperor Dragon being used against um, me. I actually do remember on the on a bus tour. No, it was just a tour that happened um, in 2004. Uh, we had a Challenge the Master type thing, which we called the Millennium Puzzle. Uh, this was this was way back when when Turbo Chaos kind of rolled with it, and they decided to put me as the Challenge the Master person. It was very hard to get actually into that. To be honest with you, you had to uh, win. A King of Games tournament. Oh yeah, it was an eight player well. knockout. Yeah, eight player knockout. And then uh, when you finally got into there, you you were able to challenge the master, as it were. Now, um, unfortunately, I was playing Turbo Chaos, and that day nobody actually was able to win <laughs> because. Uh, and then that when you start remembering that, that's when you think, you know what? I don't really miss Chaos. I'll be mm, honest with you. No, I do not miss <laughs> Chaos Emperor Dragon. Uh, there was the I remember the old priority song. Uh, which just described quick play effects, which was I'm Chaos Emperor Dragon, I priority. Okay. You okay. mean to make a mean and you can't stop me? One second. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just getting a message right here that they are ready. We are ready to resume play. Okay, we're going to see uh, another Trap Tricks Mermelio. Sorry for the delay in that, guys. Uh, I'll give you all guys a quick look at the field and hands, so you've got an opportunity to get back into the flow of things. Because you should all you should all still be feeling the flow oh at this stage of the tournament. <sighs> it's a catchphrase. I have to use it. You do have to use it. Um, we we do have to rev it up with the catchphrases. And uh, I don't think we're on a use it or lose it policy. Okay, we're going to see a void trap hole being added to uh, <laughs> uh, Gasmi's hand. And yeah. And we're going to see some damage coming in. 3,200 points, which will be half of Andre's remaining total. Now, oh, uh, Dimensional Prism was used to stop one of those attacks. Okay, how does Andrew decide to start this game? He's going against an aggressive number of uh, face down spells or traps. Uh, bottomless trap hole being used against that Bujin Yamato. Wire tap. Uh, 
Uh, going to make sure that that Bujin Yamato resolves and sticks around. He's also got a Forbidden Lance in his hand and a Bujinchi Crane, so he's... Andre's uh, pretty secure in this. Bujin Yamato declares an attack. Dimensional Prison is going to be activated by Gazmi. Just uh, seems to be asking another ruling there. And that looks like it's time. On I think time was round. called, and they're just just figuring out how it's uh, how it's going to uh, how it's going to play out. Okay, uh, they're just being called to the table to explain the uh, end of match procedure again. Obviously, both players want to be very sure they understand what's happening over the next few turns uh, in such an important duel. That's uh, the wire, second wire tap we're seeing being chained to. No, it's a forbidden lance. Okay, forbidden lance targeting his own monster. That's fine, but uh, well, he's uh, he has a Bujinji crane in his hand, so this will slip past uh, Gazmi's backhand. So there's his dual attack. Yep, so 3600. Because it's uh, Bujin Yamato's attack becomes twice its original attack. Again, very sorry for all of the delays there. Yeah, sorry guys to keep you waiting. Um, totally understand when you're like right on the edge of your seat, so trying to see which one of these two guys is going to come out on top. Uh, long delays like this uh, add a lot of tension. But just relax, take a breath. Uh, we're we're back to it. Bujin Yamato has successfully taken down the um, Traptrix Mermelio. Now, do we know what's in uh, Abdurazak's hand? Uh, Gazmi's hand. Uh, Soul Exchange, Forbidden Lance, Majesty's Fiend. Oh, there's a. I see what's going to happen there, but he is going to lose his battle phase. So important when we're in uh, extra turns. If he gives up his battle phase here. He's 400 life points behind. Okay, two face down cards, and there's a Bujinji uh, turtle in the graveyard. Two. I believe this is Andre's final turn for this match. He plays an attack. Artifact Sanctum is being activated. There is a wire tap. Yeah, he still has a wire tap. He's going to use the wire tap. Is there going to the be a wire tap in response? No, he doesn't have one. Oh. Looking at Void Trap Pole for Bin Lance. And. Okay. But uh, Artifact Sanctum is going to be negated. Uh, shuffle back into the deck. And he's creating that uh, bigger gap in the life points. Oh, uh, Gasmi is doesn't have anything he can attack back with currently at the end of this turn, and we're going to see Andre using Bujin Yamato's effect again in the end phase. Yeah, I do believe that's probably going to call for a hair at this point, but we'll see what he goes for. Yeah, the soul exchange is not going to be. It's going to deny Gasmi his battle phase, and if and that's, that's the I believe it'll be in the last turn, so there's not much he can do. I mean, it really does depend on his draw right now. Heart of the cards, <laughs> literally. This is literally this heart is of the cards. If this is when you're going to depend on it, this is this is it. This is the moment. So, friends of Gasmi watching the stream, uh, or guys what downstairs, hold your breath for this.
he looks. It's an artifact morale tack. It's that's game. That's uh, it's unfortunate. Andre's taken that down two games. Uh, so if you're a friend and supporter of Andre, congratulations. Uh, he's going to progress as a competitor to the World Championships. He will be at the World Championships in Rimini if he goes. Oh, fantastic game. Uh, well, it's closed out in time, unfortunately, because the first duel was just so long. And gas me there, literally part of the cards needed it to come through. Uh, we just uh, heard it the cheering. Like it's just through. been uh, announced downstairs. Yeah, everybody's cheering. <laughs> Everybody is cheering, although that was a very, very long round. Yes. Um, um, that was all pretty much just game one. We'll almost be getting started uh, immediately. We're going to take a, probably a few minutes after we're finished uh, discussing just, uh, that. But yeah. Bu uh, Bujin progressing into the final four. I know there's a spell book there. A Bujin, and I don't know the other two decks. I'm not quite sure of the other two decks as well, but I'm sure we will see. We're going to sure probably see something. See. Um, well, we've got our we've got our competitors for the World Championships. Uh, these guys you'll be seeing again uh, when we do get to Rimini. Yes. And we figure out who will take home the title of World Champion. But there's still one thing left undone here at the European Championships in Amsterdam this year, and that is to figure out who is our number one player in Europe. In Europe there's still yes. everything to play for. That title alone carries so much weight behind it. That and I believe the prize structure is pretty. Yeah, and all the prizes. Well. That's a, that's also the, the another prizes are definitely giant yeah, reason to something uh, you definitely want to keep going to uh, to, to push through. Do and you know the prize structure? Win. I do not, but you right, guys can, can find out on yugiocard.com if you look up European Championships. Definitely, you can see what these guys still have left to play for. The biggest part of the day is over. These champions are going to be carrying the our flags into Rimini and uh, hopefully bring the title back uh, back to Europe. Definitely. No, oh, you're just, uh, you're just checking. I'm just going to have a quick look there because uh, we've not been given a time limit, so I will just quickly... We've not received up. our warning yet. Uh, live How do you guys feel about that game? Uh, are there any plays you would have done differently? Uh, is there any opportunity you saw that maybe Andre or Gasmi didn't? Again, so sorry, Gasmi, I've been mispronouncing your name this this entire game and I I hope you had fun this weekend uh, you played you played very well in that final game ah uh, okay I was just uh, I just received my it's okay one minute warning it's okay, it's okay. Uh, you can hear everybody running to their friends by the look of it so I would definitely say um, there's a big queue down uh, by the stairs not <laughs> coming waiting to it's uh, not coming up on there but do check it on yugiocard.com okay uh, you can find all that and we'll probably tell you next next round as well uh, but thank you very much for bearing with us it was a very long round uh, join us very soon for the we'll top four we'll be back very soon guys we'll be very back soon thank you very much